Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. In this video, it's gonna be a step-by-step -step build video of my friend and customer, Brad, and his LJ. So this is a little before of Brad's clean LJ. Brad's done a lot of the work himself, and he brought it to us to finish it up. You'll see right back in this area here, that tire and axle needs to be moved back that way, which is what we're gonna help him out with. So you'll see Brad already did the comp cut from Motobuilt. He did a good job in his garage, cutting it up, rolling the corners. Looks really clean. So now it's up to us to stretch this axle back um, with a combination of a different fuel cell, some aluminum links to lengthen it, some trusses from Motobelt, some bracketry, and some coilovers from ADS. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Stick around as we stretch the axle back as far as we can on Brad's Jeep, give him a better departure angle, and make this LJ look sweet. Yeah. We'll go into some more detail once we get this uh, LJ on the rack um, and we can show you better views of everything. But so this will kind of be a two part build series for Brad. We're starting off with the rear and then a little later on, we'll transition over to the front, build out some coilovers, work on some steering and some more suspension. So I'm really looking forward to this build. We've been planning it out for a while. Brad is a really cool guy. He's actually a pilot. And uh, when we kind of connected and met each other, I told him I was looking to pursue getting my own pilot's license. And he's been awesome answering all my questions, um, helping me along the process. As, as a lot of you know, um, I'm currently working to obtain my private pilot's license, doing training and, and building up some hours. So, so thank you, Brad. Hopefully we're going to turn the favor, build you a pretty sweet Jeep that uh, can conquer any of the trails, anything you throw at it. All right, it's all racked. Got some parts getting laid out here. Starting on the left, we've got an example of what the aluminum links are gonna look like. We're gonna use two inch on the lowers, inch and three quarter upper, a bunch of motobuilt parts here, motobuilt upper truss, axle coilover mounts, motobuilt bump stop pads. Uh, we decided to use rock chalk Johnny joints. Um, Brad does drive this Jeep on the street quite a bit. So times are great, but a lot of times they can induce a lot more noise than uh, you want with times and so the Johnny joints are strong and they're rebuildable. So using some narrow Johnny joints there, Artec coil over towers that will be on the frame. Of course, we're running the ADS two and a half coil overs. Rock jock, any rock. Some East Coast here supply 35 spline axle shafts with the 35 spline ARB locker and some magnitude coil over springs. So we've got some more parts going on it, but for uh, table space and time's sake. All right, first step, we got the axle out of the Jeep. Had Jake here helping out. Knocked it out, flip it around here. Making room for lots of activities. Sneaking up on it, Ernest. What do we got going on here, Ernest? Now we're installing an Atlas II transfer case. I'm just making a bracket to hang the control module, make it all work that comes with it. Sweet. So, quick the intermission with Ernest, putting that Atlas in there. All right, quick little peek of the gas tank removed. So the lighting's not the best here, but if you take a look here, this is the tank that we're replacing. The old, I think that's a safari tank is what he had in there before. So I have a lot of fuel, but for the stretch that we're trying to do, you've got this nice cut out here, which is gonna allow us to push that axle back quite a bit and help out with our stretch. So we can still keep it underneath and not do some type of fuel cell in the bed like a lot of people do. Pretty slick. Just a quick update, uh, we got busy, it's been hot, so we didn't really do much filming, camera was off. Jake did a good job cleaning up the axle. A lot, a lot of grinding, but she's shiny, she's ready for the truss, the link brackets, and the coilover mounts. Also, get the frame cleaned up on the Jeep, remove the cross member so we can stretch the tank back as far as we can. This is the nitty gritty part of the job, but it's gonna look great. Truss welded up, 
It's not the most prettiest thing in the world, but I'm more concerned about penetration and functionality. So let's go take a look. got busy sorry for the lack of updates um, let's head out in the shop um, I got my brother Rob who's got a mill and a lathe that he turns all the steering and all the control arms for us here in house it's been awesome having him been be able to do that for us and uh, get these control arms and also the steering done for our customers as quick as possible right now he's doing uh, the control arms on Brad's um, build we're doing two inch lowers inch and three quarters upper like I said all out of aluminum uh, 7075 uh, solid bar so let's go check it out. All right, hopefully you saw some of the action shots of my brother Rob doing the uh, control arms. He starts with just solid um, aluminum bar, cuts it down in a uh, bandsaw and uh, actually uh, bores it out with a, a, the drill bit, as you can see on there, the big drill bit, and then taps it. Um, kind of all done by hand. I haven't ever had one of these things break on us or any of the threads pull out. So it does great work. Um, if you're considering anything for your next build in terms of control arms or steering, go with some 7075 aluminum. They're uh, strong and and it looks awesome too. Well, it's true. I thought going into making YouTube videos um, and documenting the builds, the hardest part was gonna be not building the vehicles, but actually remembering to record and taking the time to record. My wife is about to have a baby any day now. And so I've been running around with my head chopped off trying to finish up projects for customers and also fixing some issues that we've had to fix, unfortunately. So that has led to this build, getting us back on track. We've made a lot of progress. I haven't documented or filmed any of it so this is my attempt to catch up to speed on what we've done so far so as you can see with the comp cut we wanted to stretch this thing back as far possible um, so normally when I run these anti rocks I run them up here up front but that would have made our arms that we would have needed crazy crazy long and uh, this actually works really good full droop and full bump that arm never overextends and doesn't hit anything so um, and, and it's shiny aluminum, matches the arms and everything. All right, we got the pretty truss going on, making some brake lines right now to go up and along the truss, and kind of tying and, and make everything look nice and tidy. Here's a look at the other side. It's coming out nice. Uh, 35 spline ARB locker. Brad is going to upgrade this axle in the future, but uh, for now he just wanted to beef up as much as he could with what he had. So then he's ready for phase two. Of course, we've got the Adams drive line, 1350 upgrade, aluminum control arms, Johnny joints, narrow Johnnies, give them max articulation. It's turning out nice. Hopefully you can see back there, we've got that Genrite tank allows a ton of stretch. The sucker's long in the rear. It's gonna make that comp cut fill in nicely and, and make it look good. Of course, we've got the Dirty Lifes mounted and balanced on the Nitto Trail Grapplers. Some of my personal favorites, just a great all around tire. They were super hard to get. They were on back order forever and we finally got them and uh, Brad bit the bullet and, and we're running them. So I know we've got guys from all different skill sets and levels that follow the page and follow us. Um, for anyone new to automotive work or just off-road uh, fabrication, you'll notice um, I had someone ask, what are all those little check marks that you put on all the bolts and stuff? That's actually like a paint mark. Um, it's like a tamper lock. Um, it just allows us to, when you've got a lot of different bolts going on and you're doing a full build, it can be super easy to lose track of um, what you've tightened, what you haven't tightened. Um, this just allows us to track and see what we have tightened. After we torque a bolt, we go ahead and uh, apply that. Um, and then also, if it ever comes loose, you can tell because the check marks don't line up. Uh, it's just kind of off, so yeah. yeah.